In development debates, we take a look at issues shaping the future and present of China. Today, we'll take a look at what experts have to say about Bloomberg's efforts in China. There has been a controversial story written about the American news source Bloomberg. It has been said that they are spiking stories related to certain high-profile issues in China. The stories could affect Bloomberg's position in China in the future. But this doesn't just relate to Bloomberg as a news source. Bloomberg is also a service offering detailed and complex financial information through its terminals. People often consider its newspaper as a mere advertisement for its bigger revenue stream, which comes from their very expensive terminals. So we'll look at the prospects for the future of Bloomberg's business in China, both as a news source and as a company selling financial information. Their website is already inaccessible within mainland China, following stories related to high-up officials. The same has happened to the New York Times Chinese language site, which solely functions as a news source. When news broke out about Bloomberg spiking the stories, papers like the New York Times wrote reports explaining the scenario. A Taiwanese animated story broke the news, but it was the story of New York Times writer Edward Wong that gave it worldwide attention. The story brought up issues like Bloomberg's future plans to continue working in China. The story brings to light the point that Bloomberg's credibility as a news source could be damaged by its business interests. As the New York Times is also blocked in China already, analyzing the opportunity costs for both companies can be used in close comparison. The opportunity costs for the New York Times are likely lower than that of Bloomberg's, even though they are both unable to get subscriptions from mainland China without VPNs. According to Douglas Arthur of Evercore Partners, the New York Times is estimated to be making 91 million U.S. dollars in 2012 from subscriptions alone. That would be without any legally coming from mainland China. If you were to calculate the opportunity costs, then you would need to find out how many would be willing to sign up for paid subscriptions. The question here would be how many viewers of their Chinese website would be willing to pay for a subscription fee of 15 U.S. dollars per month. It's likely that the amount possibly gained from subscriptions is worth less than having the reputation of bending for China. Bloomberg certainly doesn't want to seem like it's kowtowing either, though. There is still value in keeping up their credibility as a news source. But once again, subscriptions to their online Chinese language site probably aren't their biggest financial concern either. A rational issue would be if they wanted to sell their terminals to China. Also, they would probably like to keep covering China with reporters in the country. Zachary Seward of Quartz said that Bloomberg is currently the biggest seller of terminals with over 315,000 subscribers. He said that they are selling for 20 to 24,000 U.S. dollars per year for each terminal. Using simple math, that figure comes out to around 7 billion U.S. dollars. These terminals are able to provide very specific and relevant data that are considered essential to the finance world. They can also be customized to the needs of the users. The companies that would likely have an interest in buying them in China are financial service companies or state-owned enterprises. Edward Wong noted that their sales within state-owned enterprises have slowed. The future of state-owned enterprises will assumedly be addressed at the third plenum this month. But even if they are broken apart, it probably wouldn't be for a long time due to its complexity. So SOEs will likely continue to be good potential clients. In brief, Bloomberg seems to be in a public relations mess at the moment. Their credibility as a news source is at risk, while their interest in China could still be further compromised. This could lower the value of their parent company. If it's true that they are spiking stories, then maybe they should have sold their stories to other papers. If Bloomberg can actually renegotiate its position in China, then maybe the financial upside for both their products, the news and the terminals will improve.